Hey guys, today we are going to talk about why people think Harry Styles is a bad actor. Let's get right into it. We live in the Harry Styles era. The star attended the premiere of Don't Worry Darling in which he co-stars after a 14-night stint at Madison Square Garden in support of his recently released number one album. The film is unique in that, due to some major behind-the-scenes drama, it has received more attention since production began than almost any other recent film that has come to mind. Everyone appears to be skeptical of Harry's acting ability when it comes to the performances. Even die-hard Harry fans are criticizing his acting. Is he really that bad? This should be the Harry Styles movie season. The former member of the boy band turned global solo pop superstar is attempting to break into film stardom with not one, but two lead roles in the Oscar bait films due out this fall. But stands, I'm sorry. Harry may dazzle on the Madison Square Garden stage, but his work as an actor leaves something to be desired. Styles' natural charisma as a performer, which he possesses in spades, has yet to translate to his work on screen in Olivia Wilde's Twilight Zone-esque thriller Don't Worry Darling or the period romance My Policeman. It's possible that he's just not the right fit for either of the roles in which he's been cast. Or he just doesn't have the chops to compete with Oscar-nominated Florence Pugh and Emmy-nominated Emma Corrin. Styles appears strangely uneasy on screen, ill at ease with the task of another person, but also let down by the films around him, which can't figure out what to do with his presence. They are both too enamored with the idea of Harry Styles as Dream Man, even when the plots require him to represent human failings. With One Direction's Beatles aping antics and dad rock vibes, Styles has long felt like a throwback to a different era of musicians. In Don't Worry Darling, he plays Jack Chambers, who, at first glance, appears to be a perfect imitation of a mid-century husband. He looks great in a suit and adores his wife, but we know deep down that he is a secret misogynist. While Wilde's film is clearly set in a fictitious, hazy version of the 1950s, My Policeman is a faithful recreation of this era. The drama, directed by theater veteran Michael Grandage and based on Beth and Robert's novel, stars Styles as Tom Burgess, a closeted gay man working as a copper in the 1950s Brighton area. The film, which jumps back and forth in time, tells the story from the perspective of Tom's wife, Marion, a school teacher played as a child by Emma Corrin, and his lover Patrick, a museum curator played by David Dawson. From Marion's point of view, the audience witnesses a tentative courtship between this heterosexual couple, during which Patrick is introduced as an acquaintance who eventually becomes a close friend to both. Meanwhile, Patrick's diaries reveal that they had begun an affair long before Tom brought them all together. Yes, there are sex scenes between Styles and Dawson that are intense, passionate, and feature brief nudity, but they are not nearly as groundbreaking as Styles misguidedly thought in his Rolling Stone cover story. They, like the rest of the film, are hampered by the fact that it's difficult to figure out who Tom is apart from being, well, Harry Styles. Marion and Patrick both imply that the man they are in love with is handsome but coarse, not unintelligent, but a person of simple interests who truly believes he can do the right thing as a police officer. Patrick even refers to him as ordinary. The issue is that there is nothing ordinary about Harry Styles. He never loses the alluring impish spirit that makes him so good at his day job and never disappears into the character being described. This is why he makes sense in his brief Marvel cameo as Star Fox, a space adventurer. Styles plays Tom with charm, but he fails to capture the emotional turmoil of a man whose job conflicts with his deepest desires. It's never clear why Tom is so committed to being a cop or how he reconciles his faith in the law with the fact that homosexuality is illegal in London. Tom is underdeveloped in part because we only see him through the eyes of his lovers, but you're left wondering if they're so into him because, well, he's Harry Styles, not the character he's supposed to be playing. When he turns up the volume for the dramatic moments where he lashes out against his spouse, it appears staged, as if Styles is overthinking how angry he should be rather than actually feeling that anger. Don't Worry Darling runs into a similar challenge. The version of Jack that appears in flashbacks, a sort of parody of an incel captivated by a Jordan Peterson type, never really meshes with the dude who loves to go down on his wife in their perfect development community. Styles struggles to master the nastiness required to make Jack as revolting as he should be, so he comes across as more of an annoyance than a threat. Harry Styles is easy to fall for. He has those dimples, makes fun music, is friendly to fans, and is far more fashionable than most men. Don't worry, darling, and my policemen attempt to subvert the natural appeal of the man who may treat people with kindness and anthem, but fail. Styles isn't quite ready to shed the likability that has propelled him to success. 
That's all for today, and we'll be sure to catch you all in the next one.